All right, so I want to remind you that you actually know how to do this already. It's just that the algebra may be tripping you up. If the problem instead said something like 3 over 5 plus 5 over 8, you would say, oh, well, these have different denominators, so I need to make them the same denominator. So what's missing from this denominator is an 8, and so I would multiply this fraction by 8 over 8 to give me the common denominator of 40 and the new numerator of 24. And this denominator is missing a 5, so I would multiply top and bottom by 5 to give me the common denominator of 40 and the new numerator of 25. And now I can go ahead and add because I have a common denominator, right? And that would be 49 over 40. Well, the exact same thing holds true when you have algebra instead of numbers down there. So let's take a look at what it looks like with algebra. The first thing I would want to do is look at all of the things being multiplied in my various denominators and come up with what my new denominator would look like. So I'd start by saying, well, this fraction has an x times an x minus 1. This fraction repeats that x, so I don't need to put another one in there, but it also multiplies in an x plus 1. So I know in order to combine these fractions, I'm going to need that x plus 1 in the denominator as well. And then when I look at this fraction, it has the x minus 1, which I've already accounted for, the x plus 1, which I've already accounted for. So nothing new there. So now I go back to each fraction and I say, okay, for my first fraction, I already have the x and the x minus 1. So what I'm missing is the x plus 1. And I multiply that to top and bottom because anything over itself is 1. And multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value of the fraction. It just changes the form of it. So if I went ahead and distributed this 3 through my x plus 1, that would give me 3x plus 3 as the new numerator and x times x minus 1 times x plus 1 as the new denominator. But this fraction has the same value as this fraction. It's just changed its form. Now I'll do the same thing over here. Well, I see my x and my x plus 1, so I need to multiply an x minus 1 top and bottom. Again, just multiplying by 1 doesn't change the fraction, just changes the form. Denominators the same, because that was the goal, right? All three having the same denominator means I can combine their numerators. Now I distribute this through, and my new numerator is... And I'm going to do it one more time here. I've got my x minus 1. I've got my x plus 1. I'm missing an x. Multiply top and bottom by x. That's my new version of this. My denominators are the same for all three, which means I can go ahead and add or subtract the numerator. So when I put all this together, I get 3x plus 3. Now, this minus applies to both of these terms. So that's minus 2x squared, but now minus minus 2x means plus 2x. Keep an eye on that. And finally, plus x. Last step is I'm going to combine like terms. So I have a 3x plus an x. That'll be 4x plus another 2x, 6x. And then I have no other number term and I have no other squared term. And I'll maybe reorder these minus 2x squared plus 6x plus 3. Maybe I'm going to do a quick x method to make sure that none of these factors are in here that could be canceled. So I need to multiply to make a negative 6x and add to make a 6, and none of these are going to get me there, which means this is not going to factor evenly into anything. It'll be something with a square root, which means this is my fully factored form of this algebraic addition. All right, stay tuned for more videos, for more practice on this subject. Take a look at some of these other videos. Check out the Algebra 2 playlist. Good luck with your finals. And as always, keep on mathing.